of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Christos Anisti. Christ is risen. Al Masihu Qam. We continue to say this, as we said, for the 50 days uh, after the Holy Glorious Resurrection, as we come together and uh, remember, and not only remember, but live. Live the resurrection. Live the resurrection. Comes today, the first Sunday after the feast, which is another feast actually in the church. So Thomas Sunday in the Coptic Orthodox Church is one of the minor seven feasts that we are celebrating, celebrating his glory, celebrating his wounds, celebrating his resurrection. And it's also called the New Sunday, the New Sunday, as we see, and as we probably, if you're paying attention to the Pauline epistle today, we'll, 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 we'll point at it here in a few minutes. Called also the New Sunday called also Sunday, Thomas Sunday, the new Sunday. It's a beautiful time to come together and to understand exactly what and how we can live what we celebrate, how we can live what we celebrate and what we believe. In order to understand this, the new Sunday, let's come back again to the Pauline epistle, Ephesians chapter 4, and specifically verse 24, Ephesians 4.24. <clears throat> and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness to put on the new man and if we go back to the original language where it's written the put on and created are both in a very very specific verb we talked about it before the earth which is the continuous a verb that has no relation to time, but it's more about the, about the what? The action. The action. It doesn't mean, okay, put on, so put it one time and you're done, or created that created one time and it's done, but it's the continuation. It is beyond the time. It is the action, more of the action of that. And you read this and you understand this and you see again, so what does God want from us? And as, what is the relationship between this and between the resurrection as we're coming today and celebrating that? In order to understand all this, you come back again, the meaning of new, meaning of new. I was looking this up in the original, in the Hebrew, Hadesh, which is close to the Arabic Hadith, not Hadith to say, but Hadith meaning new, if you know, if you understand Arabic, right? Right, new, new. Hadesh, which is new. And the actual, actual root of the, ver of, the ver of the word itself, of the verb itself, is very, very, very actually interesting. It is specifically used for sharpening and polishing swords. Make it what? New. But not just make it new so it looks good, but make it new to do what? To sharpen it. To sharpen it. And it really gives us a totally different understanding of what we're celebrating today. That when we say, when the psalm today says, sing to the Lord a new song, just look at this and understand this with the same meaning. That hadish, which is hadash, which is what again? Sharp and polished, shining, and sharp. Sharp meaning what? It's, it's effective. It's effective. And that's exactly what Thomas was struggling with. He was not sharp and he was not polished. <laughs> he was dull, right? How often we feel like we're really dull in our relationship with the Lord. We're not sharp, we're not shining, we're not polished. But comes today and saying, there is a way out of this. And there is a way, not only one time, but there is a renewal and renewed way every single day, but if I may say, every single breath that we are putting on and we are being, there is a process of what here, if you paid attention to verse 24 again, Ephesians 4.24, there is a process of what? Renewal and creation. That you put on the new man which was created, but again, the English is not really which was created at one time, but it's not actually was created, it is being created. That, that's why in Psalm 50 we pray saying what? Create in me a clean heart. Every day, every moment, every time I'm encountering something, every time I feel like I'm very, very, very what, dull. I'm useless. <laughs> 
Have you ever had a sharp uh, or, a, or a knife that is not sharp anymore, or a scissor that kind of like, oh, this is waste. You throw it in the garbage, you trash it. Right? I remember back home in Egypt, you used to have that person that comes around with a whole big wheel, right, and sharpens. <laughs> And everybody will come out and, and give them their knives and their scissors and everything in order to sharpen it. And we're so excited because we have a tool in the house that is back again to be what? Useful. Thomas at one point was not useful. But he did three things that we want to focus on today as you move on with that mindset of the new creation, the new man. Number one, he came to the Lord. Right? He didn't hide. He didn't say no. Right? Even though the Lord actually came to him again, but he still confessed in front of him. Right? Lots of times when we feel that we are away, we feel that we are useless, we feel that we are not sharp enough, we're not polished enough, we're not shining enough, what do we do? We hide. We hide. We go back to our corner. We disconnect. We don't go to church. We don't go to our father of confession. We stop praying. We stop reading. We stop doing anything. And just we are what? We are dull. We're useless. Let me just hide in my corner, and I want the, the, the whole world to, to, to cover me, right? But that's not what our beautiful Thomas did, as you can see in the icon today. He stood face to face with the Lord, and face to face with the life-giving wounds, and was able to bring that doubt, and bring that dullness, and bring that fear, and bring that weaknesses and bring everything to the Lord. Why do we run away from him when we are weak? Why would we run away from him when we feel like we are really useless, we're not sharp, we're not shiny, we're not polished? He's there. Not only is he there, he comes specifically to Thomas and appears specifically with the disciples while Thomas is there and says, well, come, come touch, come touch. Number one, don't run away. Number two and three are actually related to the Lord himself. Number two is he allowed him to do what? To touch his body. The life-giving body, as we call in, in, in the liturgy. Which is the same body that we participate in the Eucharist. So now again, in order to stay sharp, we have to have that understanding that when we come and we participate from the body, this is the body and the blood of the same Lord that Thomas touched. And was reason for him to do what? To believe. Again, Thomas before and Thomas after. Before he was like, no, 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 I don't believe any of you. This is all lie. And right after he touched, and right after he heard the word of the Lord, he right away said what? He said two words that are very, very, very important. For the whole history and for the whole universal and, and for, for everyone. My and my God. Where did he get this boldness? Where did he get this faith? Where did he get this assurance that you are my Lord and my God? When he touched the body. How often we come and we take communion and how often we really get renewed get changed, get polished, get sharpened. Or we take, come and take and then leave back again. It's just another Sunday. Let's go back again. I have too many things in my mind and too many things that I'm busy with. And just let's just, okay, it's good. I just got a blessing today. It's not just a blessing. Honestly, I, I confess, I hate it when somebody says, I'll come to take communion to get the blessing. Like, what blessing are you talking about? Reuniting with him. Or I'm coming because tomorrow I have an exam or interview or whatever, and so God will be with me. Totally misunderstanding of the purpose. We're coming to unite with him and to be one with him, to be sharpened. To change from a doubting Thomas into the confessing Thomas. My Lord and my God. So number one, don't go away. Number two, come with the faith, with the understanding. When we come to the Eucharist, it's not just coming. It's not just ritual. It's not just we stand in line and we take and we go and we're done. We are touching. The Lord is telling you, are you struggling? Come and touch. Not just touch, come and what? And eat. Come and eat. 
Number three, he heard the Lord saying him, telling him what? Thomas, come. He heard the voice. So he touched and heard the voice. And the, we hear the voice through what? Through the Bible. Back again to the question that you probably got sick of me asking. How is your Bible reading? How often do we read it? Oh, well, Abuna, maybe once a week. It's good. It's not good. It's not good. It has to be daily. It has to be, honestly, every morning before you do anything. Before you pollute the mind with everything else. That start the day with the word of God. The voice of God telling you, come and touch. Come and be renewed. Come and be polished. Come and be sharpened. So you can go out to the world and declare to the whole world that this is the resurrected Christ. And we come up with all excuses. Because the devil doesn't want us to take that and to hear that voice. As we pray in the, in the Psalms, the voice of the Lord, what? Shakes, thunders. When we read the scripture, do we really have that understanding and that faith that the word of the Lord shakes the mountains and shakes and thunders? Or it's just another, like, I have no idea, I'm just reading it. Come to him. Have faith when you come and touch, not just touch, eat. And hear, hear the word of God. Hear the word of God. Three things. That's why this is the new, and this is the renewal. And this is back again to St. Paul in Ephesians. We put on the new, everything. Again, it is beyond the time. It is the action. Continue to put on and continue to allow God to create, to create the new man. Otherwise, we're dull. We're useless. Again, a knife sitting in my drawer that I can't use it. And I just because it might have some memories, I don't even want to throw it in the garbage. But it's useless. God forbid that we are useless. God forbid that his creation who comes and partake and participate and unite with him become useless. In a time that the whole world needs a sharp sword. I'm not talking literal. <laughs> A sharp sword that can change. A word that can transform people. A life that can transform and change and eliminate the darkness. But if we're just staying away, if we're just... Imagine again if Thomas didn't come and say, well, I have to touch and I have to listen and I have to obey. And I have to confess, you are my Lord and my God. A confession, again, that changed the whole world. And by that confession, we are assured that the resurrection is an actual event that happened and continues to work with us. Let's pray during this few half an hour or so as you pray in the liturgy with, with those three things. Come to him today. Come to him now. Evaluate first. Like, yes, I am a knife that is useless. Don't hide it. There's no point of hiding it. There's no point of just trying to, to make it work. It doesn't work. It, it, it hurts more, right? It hurts more. Don't hide it. Come to me. This is the time. These beautiful, glorious day of the, days of the resurrection. This is the time that we come. Then, Lord, here we are. We're, we're, we're not sharpened. We're dull. We're not shining. Come and be eager to the moment that you come to participate from the Eucharist. This is the time. I'm touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm eating you. Please change me. As you pray in the sixth hour, by the life-giving wounds, passions. As St. Peter said, that we, by his wounds we were, or we are what? Healed. Healed. And finally, let's see what is plugging and closing our ears from hearing the voice. The voice saying, come, come. Come and confess. And take that confession and take it out because the whole world is in so much need now to a person that goes out and confesses and say, He is my Lord and my God. To Him the glory now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen.